Brown, start us off. All right, uh, Hubert, I was wondering if you could take us back to uh, to the end of last season in the Wisconsin, well, post-game Wisconsin locker room. Um, that That's something a couple of the guys talked about, your speech to them after that game, after that loss. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind, could you kind of – you know, give me insight into to how you were framing, you know, this season upcoming. And and I'm assuming, too, that that is before you felt like you were going to be the head coach. Well, you know, I was I was very upset. I was. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Hubert. Keep going. OK, there's a huge echo. And OK, I've got it now. Sorry about that, CL. Uh, no, I, you know, I, after a Wisconsin game, I was, I was upset and I was frustrated. And, you know, at the end of the season, Coach Williams always gives us as an assistant a little bit of time to be able to speak if we have anything on our mind. Uh, for eight years as an assistant, when coaches asked me at the, you know, at the end of the season, did I have anything that I wanted to say to the team? I had always said no. So this was the first time CL that I actually said yes. And I wanted to let them know that this wasn't Carolina. It wasn't Carolina to lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament. It wasn't Carolina to lose in that fashion in that um, I wanted guys that were committed to being a part of this program, being a part of this team and achieving all the team goals that we've always wanted to achieve every year. And I gave an opening to every guy on there. If, there wasn't, if they weren't locked in, if they didn't have both feet in, if they didn't unpack their bags and give – this program, everything that they had, then they needed to leave. They needed to transfer. I wanted guys fully committed. I wanted guys that wanted to be here. I wanted to be a part of this program and this history. And I was clear and definitive in, in what I wanted to uh, communicate to them after that Wisconsin game. And as a follow for for this official, you know, regular season opening, um, is there anything you have anything special planned like is your uncle possibly coming to the game like well there not you have anything planned but like you know uh, just in terms of the support you know that you have from family and friends is this going to be a bigger deal than just a regular opening you know not at all and 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 it's it's going to be the people that have been there throughout my entire life you know one of the things that I've always said is you know, as a player, the first thing that I did running out of the tunnel, whether I was in high school, college, in the NBA, I was always looking for my dad. Um, I just wanted to catch eyes with him. And it was great to have that that feeling of knowing that regardless of whatever happened in the game, I had somebody on my side. And so he'll be at the game, but he's he's always been there for me. He's been there as a player. He's been there um, as a coach. He's been there as a dad. And um Obviously, my family will be there. My oldest son, Elijah, is coming back from uh, college, and so he's going to come there. So it's just regular family um, that that have been there my entire life. Nothing else is different. Aaron, excuse me, Aaron Beard. Hey, Hubert. Um, I was struck by what you said last week about when I think when Andrew uh, Jones was asking you about if you were comfortable or coaches aren't comfortable. You said, oh, I'm very comfortable. Is there any special, I don't know, thing about the emotions you think you're going to feel tomorrow night of you know with being actually having the first regular season game or you've sounded at ease with this whole thing well you know it, it's funny a number of people have asked me over the last couple of days is you know it's just going to be different you know this is the first time that you're going to walk through the tunnel in a regular season game as a head coach at the university of north carolina and i understand yes it it, it, it is different because it it'll it'll be a regular season game but other than that it just it just isn't. And I'm a little, you know, Aaron, a little surprised by the questions from the standpoint of I've walked through that tunnel a lot, uh, like a lot. And, you know, I played here four years. I, you know, I played in the NBA 12 years, you know, ESPN for seven months out of the year. I was on national TV pretty much seven days a week. And, and I was an assistant here for, you know, for nine years. And so, from that standpoint of, you know, having the, you know, the spotlight on you, I, I, yes, I have not been there as a head coach, but I've been there before. And so this isn't, this isn't anything different to me. I'll be walking out there the same way. The emotions and the feeling would be the same way as I have walking through that tunnel. The other 2000 times that I've walked through the tunnel. <laughs> Thanks, Hubert. Yeah. Mike Barnes. 
Hey, Hubert, to, to build on that, you don't think there'll be any kind of transitional period in terms of you know, working with rotations, making calls late in the games? Because you, you haven't done that in this setting, right? Not as a head coach, <laughs> no. And uh, But, you know, I, obviously it's on a much lesser scale, but, you know, for seven years I was, you know, the head coach of the JV program that we have here. So I've been in situations where you have to make decisions. And, again, I – I've played basketball my entire life. So I, you know, I, 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 I've been out there. And so I, I, I know basketball, I know Carolina basketball. And so, um, yes, I, this will be the first time as the head coach during a regular season. But again, I, I've had a lot of experiences, whether it be on the court or on the bench that I can pull from to help me make decisions during a game. Steve, if I can follow up. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Greg. I was listening to your retelling of the story last week, Hubert, of when Roy first approached you about wanting you to take the job. I'm yeah. just curious, uh, as you and your wife had that conversation and you and your family, uh, how does that conversation go? I mean, is it like weighing pros and cons or is it pretty much known that, yeah, I'm going to take this job? Well, the first thing that we did is we just prayed about it. You know, we wanted to have a peace of mind of where we felt like Christ you know, wanted us to go. We knew that this was a door that was opened by him and we just wanted to be obedient and um, the door that was opened by him. And, you know, I will say there is one adjustment. This is the first time that I've ever had a job where my wife is in the spotlight as well. You know, the other times it's always been me. And so, you know, going around town there, you know, they'll call her the the first lady and that that's different for her. It's, it's an adjustment for her because she has always been my best friend since we met in high school. And she's always in some sense been in the background, but now she's in the forefront. So it's been a little bit of different experience for her. Thank you. Andrew Jones. Coach, if you go back 34 years, back to the days when you were catching passes at Lake Braddock and shooting baskets at Lake Braddock, what would 17-year-old Hubert have thought of what you're going to experience here in the next couple of days, that you were actually in a position, uh, a seat that you've revered for, for your entire life, basically? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've explained this before, other than, you know, wanting to, to play here at North Carolina and be a part of this program and, and also get my education here, that's pretty much the only like forward goal, forward thinking that I've ever done in my entire life. You know, I, at a young age, I knew that this is where I wanted to go and this is what I wanted to do in terms of being a part of this program. You know, I never, when I was at Carolina, I never thought about going to the NBA. It just wasn't on my mind. My focus was on being the best that I could be at Carolina. And wherever that led me, then that would happen. When I was at, in the NBA, I never, thought about after I finished playing, I would love to have a career as an analyst on ESPN. I just never thought about it. And from, from ESPN to being an assistant coach and assistant coach to a head coach. And so um, from that standpoint, I've never planned or, or thought about it. So, you know, what would I be thinking at 17 years old? I would be thinking at 17 years old when I was 155 pounds at Lake Braddock High School that I would never have started and played at Carolina. I would never play 12 years in the NBA for somebody when in elementary school and in middle school, I was in speech therapy class because I had trouble with my pronunciation. I would have never thought that I would have been on ESPN for seven years. And I would have never thought that I would have been able to come back as an assistant coach and now the head coach of North Carolina. So at 17 years old, I, 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 there's not much that I would have thought about <laughs> that, is, that has happened in my life, which is the cool thing. That's a really, really cool thing. And if you don't mind me asking a quick follow-up, um, and if you could share with us, what was your dad's reaction when you told him that Roy wanted you to take the job? He was a little, uh, he was shocked. <laughs> he was excited. Uh, he was scared. He was supportive. He was, he, whatever emotion that you can think of, that was, that's what my father felt. Really when it really hit home for him is when he came to the first official practice this year. And he just was blown away. He, you know, after practice, and then he sent me a text as soon as he got back home to Washington, D.C. And he says, I just, 
I just would have never imagined, I would have never believed that this could have happened. And the only other time that he said that is when I was playing in the NBA and it was our second preseason game. We, the first preseason game that we played is against the San Antonio Spurs in Albany, New York. He wasn't there. And so the next day we played at home against the Dallas uh, Mavericks and he was in the front row watching me play in the NBA. And that's the only other time that my dad said, I, I, I never would have imagined, I never would have dreamed that I would be experiencing watching you go through this. And it was just, it was a lot of fun just, just talking about that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Michael Coe. Hey, Coach. So uh, going back to something that both you and Armando said following the exhibition about not really having a starting lineup, how soon before the game do you actually set the five starters for the game? Because I know Armando said it was based on defensive grades uh, by position group. Yeah, it is. I mean, I know who I'm going to start tomorrow night. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it is one of the things that when, when I was um, at Carolina, um, the starting lineup was all dependent, obviously, on positions, but it was dependent on how you graded out defensively. And I really love that. You know, I love that that Coach Smith, you know, even though that I could shoot the ball pretty well uh, for myself personally, he held me accountable on being able to, to do well on a defensive end as well. And that's what I want to do with these guys. You know, it's not okay to, to score 30 points, but allow your guy to score 40. You, you, you're going to have to play on both ends of the floor. And I want our guys um, to be locked in and, and for us to be the best defensive team that we can be. And so to, in order to hold each other accountable, um, I thought they would bring back the, the defensive award winners and allow guys to be um, rewarded for their effort on the defensive end for being allowed to start. And so um, I'm looking forward to doing that for the remainder of the year. Thank you. Kiera. Sorry, hi coach. I just wanted to know, uh, what is your um, attack plan for Loyola tomorrow? Um, what there's, were there some things that you wanted to harp on for tomorrow's game? And um, yeah, that's just about it. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. No, I, I, one of the things that I felt like from the exhibition that I thought we did really well is I thought we were really good defensively, especially in the second half. I think at the beginning of the, the second half, we had 10 consecutive stops. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. And um, Elizabeth City was very athletic and very good and very prepared. And so I was really happy with it defensively. So going into um, Loyola, I want us to be really great defensively. Um, um, that's that's an area that uh, that I feel like that we can be consistent every day. You know, shots go in, and sometimes they sometimes we make them, sometimes we miss. But one of the things consistently is for us to be great on the defensive end. And I really think that we can get some stuff um, in transition. You know, because of our defense in Elizabeth City allowed us to get out in transition. And one of the things that I consistently talk to the guys is about you know we want to sprint to offense, but it's our pace. That's our pace. We want to be the fastest team in the country, our pace. And um, a lot of times our defense leads into our pace and that gives us good offense. And as you can see, we've got tremendous versatility on the offensive end amongst our bigs and also our, also our guards as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Coach Davis, we are done with you. Thank you very much. We'll get Armando in here shortly. Okay. All right. <laughs> For sure, Todd Nets can come up with like Braddock. I should have done that. I should, should have, have said, I should, I should have been have hanging out with Todd Burnett. Hanging out with Todd Burnett. We, you know, we uh, worked at a restaurant together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was bar back and he was the chef. You up. Set me up. I said, great. I'm ready for you. For, for, for great. <laughs> you gave me the easy pass. Yeah.
Yes. I'm a pro of this. So I said Steve's got to unmute himself. So just hang on a second. You'll hear him in a minute. Thank you. All right, sorry about that. Questions for Armando. Greg Barnes, you lead us off. Hey, Armando. Last couple of times we've talked with Hubert, he's really seemed to emphasize uh, defense. Have, have you seen kind of an elevated emphasis on that end of the court in preseason practice? Definitely. I mean, every day in practice, that's like one of the huge things we do is we do like a defensive execution series and we do a bunch of different uh, defensive concepts and we kind of keep track of it. And um, that's something that we have a lot of fun doing too. I mean, we kind of got a lot a significant defense that we play this year that most college teams don't play. I think the only other team that may do it is like Duke I've, since I've been in college. So it's a lot of fun being able to play that way and we all love it. Is it is it a big change from how Roy used to emphasize things defensively? Yes, I would say so because we play more like in the gaps versus denying and also just uh, the way we play ball screens, it's a lot easier on me as a big, and it kind of allowed me to, you know, kind of be the quarterback of the defense and just decides what the guards do versus the old defense. But, I mean, it's hard on the guards, though, but it's easier on me, so I love it. Thanks. Andrew Jones. Hey, Armando, um, your coach has a lot of reverence for this program and for the people that have come before him, and I'm sure he's talked a lot to you, uh, to you guys about it. Do you have a grasp on kind of how cool it is for him to travel the basketball path that he has and end up in this position as the head coach of this program? Definitely. I mean, he talks to us about it all the time, just like his journey, just from even when he was a little kid, when his uh, uncle played here, just to now him being the head coach is just kind of crazy to think that him as a little kid coming here, just watching the game to now being the head coach is how everything came full swing. Is that kind of a cool thing you guys ever talk about how coaches, he's, he's gone to the NBA for a long time, he's at ESPN for a long time, but he's sort of a Carolina lifer. And, and you have he's has that total UNC DNA. Is that something you guys ever talk about? Definitely. I mean, I think it just speaks on just the whole program of UNC just in general, just UNC having such a strong just alumni just background and former players that we're allowed as a program to hire players that formerly went here. I mean, it just says a lot about the program. I mean, you see a lot of other programs going and getting guys from other schools, uh, other leagues and stuff like that. But just us being able to keep it in the family says a lot. Cool, thank you. Dina King. Hey, Armando, with the COVID year last year, how excited are you and the team being able to play in front of the fans again in the Smith Center? I mean, it's just so exciting. I mean, just being able to play in the Smith Center with so many fans, I mean, it already gives us a 10-point advantage over other teams. And just for some players, well, most players, just hearing the crowd go crazy after you score, it just gives you an extra pump, and you want to just keep going and go even harder, just to impress the crowd and get that W. Thank you. CL. Hey, Armando, um, in what ways have you seen the, the returning players kind of uh, take heed to what Hubert told you guys at, after that Wisconsin game, um, like, you know, through the summer and in and, and this offseason leading up to uh, tomorrow's game? Yeah, I mean, being the first team uh, under the Roy Williams to uh, lose in the first round, I mean, that was just something that wasn't a good feeling. And like Coach Davis said, it was something he let us know about and, let us know that's not the Carolina way. So just coming in, like you said, um, he told us like, I'm trying to think, it was something like, I guess like if you're not locked all the way in, like I guess you can leave. So that was something that he told us. So coming in, everybody that came back want to be here. So that's what it is. And how, how do you feel different? You kind of like an OG now, this your third year, you know, mm -hmm coming into this season, um, in what ways do you kind of feel like you see things differently going into this? I mean, it's just kind of weird. I think about it all the time because I swear I felt like I just started college just two years ago. Me and Cole just first getting here and now being a junior. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think just people looking at me as kind of like a veteran player. But, I mean, I've been embracing it. Just It's something to get used to, though, for sure. Thanks. Michael Coe. 
Hey, Armando. So today you were named to the uh, Naismith Award watch list for National Player of the Year. Is that something at all that you pay attention to, or is it just, you know, one day at a time? No, nah, just one day at a time. I never really get into that stuff. I, I really don't. I didn't even know until you just told me. Okay. Well, uh, you have a great SID, uh, Armando. Yeah, we tell you all these things. Yes, you didn't tell me that, though. I didn't know that. <laughs> Anything else, Michael? Uh, no, that's it. All right, uh, Kiera. Hey, Armando. Uh, previous championship years, teams have made a commitment to um, amongst themselves, you know, for the new year as it starts. What kind of commitment have you guys made as the season, st as the season starts tomorrow to each other? I would say just our main thing is just really just wanting to win and not focusing on just us like personally, but just as a team, like if somebody goes off one night, we all just happy for just the player and just hopefully that we won, but just not being so selfish and just being more just for the team. I would say that's the main thing. Just, we got a lot of unselfish guys. Thanks. Anybody else for Armando? All right, Mondo, thank you very much. Appreciate everybody jumping on. We will see most of you, if not all of you, tomorrow. Thank you. No